Hi, in this video we're going to look at some basic bond facts. Uh, the slides in this video are going to look very similar to a previous video where we talked about basic loan facts. Very, very similar. We just got a little bit different terminology because we're talking about bonds now versus loans. But all the symbols are basically the same. Okay, so let's look at uh, some, some facts here. Lots of problems, like with loans, lots of problems uh, have to deal with calculating this cap B sub K value. Either that's the end result or that's going to be an intermediate step along the way. And so let's look at how we determine uh, book values. The cap Bs now are book values instead of balances. But let's look at how we determine some of these cap B sub K values. Uh, as with loans, uh, these are loans. So there's a retrospective and a prospective way. So retrospectively means we're, we're looking in the past. We're not concerned about the future. So I'm going to take the values on my timeline. I'm going to delete off the future values and just look at the past values. And so retrospective, the uh, book value just after the kth coupon uh, would be the accumulated value of the price minus the accumulated value of the payments. And we can, we can look at, uh, we can come up with, 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 you know, specific expressions for these values. For instance, the accumulated value of the, of the price is just, I take the price and I accumulate it for K period. So that's a cap P times one plus I to the K. And then the accumulated value of the past payment, since the past payments on these bonds are level, uh, then it's just a minus a C times an S angle K. So that's the uh, prospective calculation. I'm sorry, that's the retrospective way of calculating a book value just after the Kth coupon. And of course now there's also a prospective calculation and prospectively we're looking into the future. So I'm going to delete off the past payments and that's what I'm looking at prospectively. And of course the prospective calculation for cap B sub K is this, the present value of the remaining payments. And so this is going to be uh, the cap C's or, or level payments. Just after the kth payment, I have n total payments of, of cap C. So just after the kth payment, I have n minus k payments left. And so the, the book value at time k would be a cap C times an A angle n minus k. And then plus the redemption value, I need to discount that for n minus k period. So I'm going to do that by multiplying by a V to the n minus k. Okay, so this is the entire uh, picture. I have these retrospective and prospective ways of calculating the book value at, at time k. And if I specifically look at the prospective calculation of the book value at time zero, that's just the price. That's the present value of all the payments. So that would just be a, a cap C times an A angle N plus a cap R times V to the N. This is what I'm going to refer to as the standard pricing formula. Okay, so now let's look at a little more closely at the cap I and the cap P values. Uh, remember, cap I is the amount of interest earned during the kth period because we're in the bond context. We're earning interest. We're the lender, so we're earning interest. And, and, uh, and we, we calculate that the same way we cal calculate the cap I sub K with, with loans. We multiply I times the cap B at time K minus 1. So look at the book value at time K minus 1. Multiply that by the uh, by the yield rate, and you'll get the amount of interest earned during the K period. So I just use the terminology on bonds there. Okay, cap P sub K is, in our context now, it's the amount of principal adjustment with the K payment, and we get that by subtracting the cap I sub K value from the payment amount, which is C, cap C. So, uh, so that's our formula for, or that's our method and our formula for calculating the amount of principal uh, adjustment with the kth payment. Okay, so the kth payment or the kth coupon. All right, so ne the next thing we did is we looked at uh, uh, balances at neighboring time per periods. So now it would be book values at neighboring time periods. And so uh, the, the what's going to the the difference between the book values between two neighboring time periods will be accounted for through that uh, coupon payment cap C. And so there were a couple of ways to calculate or a couple of ways to relate the book value at time K minus one with the book value at time K. One was you can take the book value at time K minus one, accumulate it with interest by multiplying by one plus I and then subtract the coupon payment. And then the other way is to take the book value at time K minus one and then just subtract off the part of the coupon, the, uh, the, the part of the coupon that's, that's adjusting the principal. That's the principal adjustment. And so those are the two uh, formulas for calculating book values at neighboring time periods. They're the exact same, symbolically, they're the exact same thing as, as the loan uh, balance formulas. Okay, so now let's go back to our uh, cap I and cap P's 
the other thing that we were interested in doing is instead of looking at the amount of interest and the amount of principal adjustment at one point in time, looking at over a period of time, what is the amount of the principal adjustment over that period of time, say from time K to time M. And we would, uh, on the one hand, what we're doing is we're saying instead of calculating a single cap P value, we're summing up a bunch of cap P values, namely the cap P values starting at time K plus one and going up to time M, that's M uh, that's M minus K of those values. That's, uh, that's the length of the time period between time K and time M. But what we found with loans, which is still true with bonds, is that the sum of those cap P values, that amount of that principal adjustment over that time period from time K to time M, is just the difference between the book values at times K and M. And so symbolically, that's just a cap B sub K minus a cap B sub M. Uh, in particular now, if I took the K, the K value to be zero and the M value to be N, that means I'm adding up all of the cap P values. And it, generally when you add up all of the cap B values, you get a cap B sub zero minus cap B sub N. Now in the context of loans, cap B sub zero is, a, is the loan amount cap L, and cap B sub N is the balance after the nth payment, which is zero, and so that that difference there between a cap B zero and a cap B sub, sub N is, is L. In other words, when you add up all of the cap P values on a loan, you get the loan amount. But with a bond, the cap B, Z, cap B sub zero is the price, cap P, and the cap B sub N is the redemption value, cap R. And so with a bond, when you add up all of those cap P values, you get the price minus the redemption value. Okay, so that's just a special case of, 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 of uh, this, this formula uh, above where we take the amount of principal adjustment from time K to time M being the difference between the book value at time K and, and the book value at time M. Okay, and then finally what we talked about was calculating the amount of interest over a period of time from time K to time M. So symbolically, we're, ca we're adding up the cap I values now from uh, 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 from a time K plus one up to time M. And we presented it in this order because if I was, if you're asked to calculate this amount of interest over the amount of interest earned over this time period, generally it's the, the process would be you take the sum of all the payments. In other words, the coupon payments, you sum up all the coupon payments over that time period, and then you subtract the amount of the principal adjustment. So what you're subtracting is what we just did, that difference between the book value, the book value at time uh, K minus the book value at time M. Okay, so let me, let me summarize this again. This is, this is how I would remember, and I'm, I'm about to put some formulas in. I, I, I kind of hesitated to do this because I don't want you to memorize a formula. I want you to think about a process, and the process is to get the amount of interest earned over this time period, we take the difference between the sum of all the coupon payments over that time period and the amount of the principal adjustment over that time period. But symbolically then, that would be this the difference between these two summations. Now the second summation, the summation, uh, it, the very last summation that you see there is what we did in the previous line. Um, uh, that's the amount of the principal adjustment. So really I'm just subtracting the cap B sub K minus the cap B sub M value, subtracting that difference. And now let's focus on the first term in that, in that expression that I just highlighted in red. I'm adding up then now it's, this is the sum of the payments. All the payments are the same amount. They're all the coupon amount cap C. And if you look at how many of those payments there are, you're, you're summing from an index of K plus one to an index of M. That's M minus K terms that you're summing. And every term is the amount cap C. And so the sum of all of that would just be M minus K times cap C. So you got this formula here, but I, I, again, I'd, I'd prefer that you not memorize the formula, but, but just know what the process is to, uh, to get these amounts. Okay, uh, this should look very familiar for, to you because we did this with loans and uh, uh, bonds is just different terminology. Same symbols, but just different terminology. Okay, so I will see you in the next video.